So we'll uh, sort of wait to hear, and I think uh, investors would be hearing to what the management is uh, saying with that con on the column call. Market still down about what 75 points, 18,127, 128 is where we are at. Sanjay Parikh is now joining us. He's founder and chief investment officer at Soho Asset Managers. Uh, Sanjay, great to have you with us here on the program. Thank you very much. I think uh, first time for you uh, on on this show. Uh, so welcome uh, from all of us. Uh, and uh, yeah. you know, you. I was looking at the uh, the fund fact sheet. Uh, the the you started at an interesting time, uh, which is I believe uh, earlier this year, May of this year, right? Uh, yes. So amidst all that flux, and as soon as you started, uh, you 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 got, you had that large correction, which was of course an opportunity, uh, yeah. and. Uh, so I just want to understand how how are you uh, positioned? You got about you're sitting on about eight percent of the fund in cash. Uh, you're overweight uh, sectors like uh, insurance. Uh, so just tell us uh, what's your thinking now. Yeah, no, thank you uh, to the whole team. I, I mean, this is new out there. I used to meet, uh, interact when I was in the fund. So uh, you know, we started at sixteen thousand two sixty six in May twenty third. And uh, of course, then the markets were volatile. They went up to almost to seventy thousand, and then back to fifteen thousand three hundred. So we did have a view on markets, and uh, the view was that you know one would slowly, gradually accumulate. And the period from sixteen to fifteen, we really used it well to deploy our cash, uh, and most of it back at sixteen thousand five hundred, we had deployed. So it did help our funds. Uh, you know, in terms of, uh, we did participate in the whole rise. And, uh, you know, also we had an outperformance uh, of around three and a half percent. So, so that's the process we followed. But it, it is certainly important to have uh, a view on Nifty, which is our benchmark. Uh, and that we did judiciously and also, of course, a little bit cautiously in terms of high entry price. Okay. Hi, Sanjay. Good afternoon, Nigel, on this side. Uh... Yeah, Sanjay, I'm looking at where you've deployed money, and the largest allocation is obviously the banking and the financial space. But in there, you're mostly allocated to uh, private sector banks, and the loan PSU name you've put in is SBI. Now, people are talking about this re-rating of sorts that we're seeing on these PSU banking names. They could be in for a good run even from here. That's at least what the screen is telling us. You wouldn't, yeah. go down, you wouldn't go down the line? Or you don't think that some of those smaller PSU banks you know, that were trading at half times, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 times, even after such a big run, would you allocate money out there? No, I think, uh, no, absolutely, there's a case to look at them. And we participate through SBI. SBI is a very large week for us at 5.3%. Um, um, the rest of them also we reviewed uh, the Bank of Alda, Canada Bank. And uh, they've moved up for right reasons. You know, I, I've been running the banking fund earlier in the con and ICICI as well, and I've never seen the banking balance sheet so good. Um, and they, all of them are reasonably capitalized. The NPA are at all 10 year low, uh, and now they're looking up on ROA and ROE. And the best part is, you know, now you're seeing the discipline. So going ahead, you know, I'm very hopeful that even the PSUs would, uh, you know, uh, move up in terms of the ROI, ROE uh, on the larger PSUs. The rest of them will all be bottom up and, you know, you really have to look at them, whether they have a right to win to get to that 0.91% ROA initially and then even further move up. So some of them you will have to look at as trades, but the larger PSUs, uh, clearly there is a point to look at them. Sanjay, afternoon. Reema here. Your IT weightage in the Opportunities Fund is about 10.5%. Just curious, what was it when you started off in May, six months ago? Has it come down? Has it gone up? No, we were, uh, as you said, we are cautiously deploying, you know, margin of safety is very important to us. The price value gap is important. Uh, we do look at absolute, though we cannot guarantee. Um, and we were seeing the U.S. Uh, situation quite chaotic. And, uh, you know, eventually it will impact uh, the IT services demand. Uh, so there was a tailwind in terms of uh, rupee dollar, but that came with a lag. Uh, but we took a conscious call to be underweight. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, that we still hold that. And I think the world is going to be chaotic. It's not only US, even Europe. And it would have an impact in terms of the IT demand. Uh, there would be some tailwinds, but the headwinds in terms of dollar revenue growth, will, we believe, will certainly get affected. So, uh, so that's why we were underweight on 
IT services, and we have uh, leaders like enforcers in our portfolio, but we are underweight on IT, and we continue to remain that. Mm, okay, uh, that's a sector where there is a lot of pain, <clears throat> but you don't want to step in there. Uh, generally, Sanjay, we hear that uh, the, we kind of hear the lament quite often that there are no real bargains uh, in that sense. So it's kind of hard, uh, but there are bar bargains if you believe IT will turn or anything. But you already told us you don't. You're not really very positive. I saw that your po your overweight insurance as a sector is that still does that hold still hold true? Is that a again? I mean, uh, stocks have uh, not done particularly well along with the rest of the market. What's the thesis there? No. Yeah. yeah, Prashant, so you're right, they've not done well. Uh, uh, and one good, I mean, as a strategy over years I have followed is sometimes, you know, you see an underperformance, uh, which is which is in the last one, one and a half year at times, but if the structural story is right, they actually give you an opportunity. So, uh, well, you know, operationally, near term, we are seeing pure protection growth not being there. In pure protection, the margins are very high. So some of the larger names, they transited in terms of the product profile and yet managed BNB margins. Uh, in fact, accelerated it. Uh, but, uh, but the clear APE growth, which is also very important for the overall value, uh, which is has to be contributed by pure protection, retail pure protection is not happening. Uh, the growth, even on a two and three year now, uh, they need to do better. So I think uh, the opportunity is very large. Uh, you know, the models are right. Uh, uh, so, you know, the focus on profitability for the larger names we own, um, both of them have the right model, right franchisee. Uh, it will only get better for one of them as they get merged, the parent gets merged. And we believe that there is a clear opportunity. And the most importantly, they came back to reasonable valuation. So the valuation in insurance that you do on a, on a DCA basis on the VNB, present, present value of the BNB and the uh, EVE, uh, that was coming reasonable. So on an absolute basis, then things get better. You know, you do get comfort. And that's what we got comfort in buying both of them. You know, Sanjay, uh, talking about comfort and valuation comfort and, you know, stocks that did well, the two names that come to mind for me in 2022 is ITC and Coal India. And I've noticed that you've got it in Coal India earlier this year. Now, the stock has had a good run. Surprise everyone, Un under-invested space uh, is Coal India. What do you think about the stock from year on? For the time being, the street loves the fact that they're giving a big dividend. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I remember last time me and Prashant had a session on PSUs. This was almost 18 months back. And, uh, uh, you know, at that time, we did discuss that we are open to buying PSU selectively. Uh, if, of course, the leadership is right, uh, the executive leadership, uh, you know, they are focusing on the right things. Uh, and the government intervention is less. Uh, we cannot say, you know, government intervention will never be there. But, uh, so this was one, uh, a, one stock where we did feel that, uh, you know, uh, the volume growth is coming. It is in sync with the need of the country. Uh, the valuation are absolutely, uh, all, I mean, you know, you, it's, it's today also, uh, if you take a 45,000 crore EBITDA with a 40,000 crore cash, is less than three times. This dividend this year will be 30 rupees. Uh, and the volume growth would come through. Uh, and, you know, so then it's a win-win situation. And the coal that they are selling today is at almost 80, 75, 80% discount to the imported coal price. So it's already been subsidized. So how more, more can they can be subsidized? Uh, so that was one reason we liked it. Uh, and we own, you know, we bought it right at the beginning. And we feel there's still room ahead, uh, you know, if you think uh, in terms of volume growth ahead. Uh, and as I said, you know, uh, margins, even from a small 50, 55 million tons of e-auction. Uh, and then e-auction is also at a good discount to the imported price. And yet, if you are getting reasonable growth, you know, uh, that's good enough at this valuation. So that's the rational view of what we can Sanjay, great conversation. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. We need to slip into a very short break. But on the other side, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D Street Chatter.
this festival. Bring in 